gosh, so I want to talk to you about emotional resilience today because your resilience is like your rubber ball factor. It's the things that when things go wrong, you bounce, you just bounce back into play. Um, and that can be that you bang your head against a door that doesn't open for you. And you've got a lovely little rubber plan uh, template so you just go, well, it'll be fine. Next door will open. Yeah, you know, I'll keep going, keep on going, keep on knocking. Um, but also it can be when, you know, you've had your ego bruised a little bit, your confidence knocked. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've lost a friendship. Maybe... You go to a family gathering and, you know, all the stuff from your past gets dragged up. It's about how we cope with all of the negative things that happen in our lives. The external things, the things you can't help. The snippy little email from a work colleague. You know, and these things on their own really, you know, yeah, you can brush off a lot of things that happen as an individual case. However, it's all of the things when they mount up all at once. And you suddenly think, oh my God, why does everything always happen all at once? Well, my positive spin on it is <laughs> at least if everything happens all at once, you didn't have an entirely terrible year because it all just happened in a, an entirely terrible month. But emotional resilience really is how you can be yourself, your real self, your authentic self, when everything feels like it's going to shit. <laughs> And my tips for this, if I was to kind of like concisely um, put them into place. First one, you are the thinker of your thoughts. So that rotational thinking that starts happening when you replay and replay and replay, should have said this, could have done that, could have acted differently, or the replay that is your inner critic that goes, oh, you're a terrible human being, this always happens to you, you're a victim and your life is a mess. You know, these are kind of like, in a sense, links in a chain. It feels like it's rotational, but that's because the train seems to always go back on itself. So the first link might be, you know, uh, oh, you're so stupid, I can't believe you allowed this to happen to you again. Next link, this always happens to you and you're a massive failure and your life's a complete mess. Third link, nobody will actually love you if you're a mess and then you're going to, you know, have a terrible life. If nobody loves you, then you're going to die alone and you'll be alone forever. And then the final link is usually, <laughs> as I say, it's kind of, and then you're going to die alone, smelling cat's wee. But actually, you're the thinker of your thoughts. And I mean, obviously, your story is probably different than that. I'm using that one to be a little bit funny, a little bit trite. But your story might be a different story. But if you recognise it, you realise that each thought leads to a different link. Now, other people will tell you that mindfulness is the way forward, is to kind of like stop these links in a chain using like mindfulness. But to me, I always think, well, yes, that works. But you're the thinker of your thoughts. You're not your thoughts. They're not in control of you. There is an observer. There's somebody that witnesses these thoughts. And you can engage your observer at any time and stop that link in the chain from happening. So you suddenly go, oh yeah, I see that. Now, the next thought needs to be, and I'm okay with that. That's fine. I'm all right with that. Not a problem. So it's like, you know, oh, you're really stupid. Yeah, I am. No, my day. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, okay, whatever. I love me for being a bit daft. Oh, I love me for being daft. You know, I love me, bit stupid, love me, great. Because the more you can put self-love into the situation and laugh at yourself, and this is why I use humour and I do my stand-up personal development stuff, and this is why I use humour with my clients, because the minute you stop taking your problems seriously and believing with a furled brow that you must fix your problems, no, why? Because you fix one and then another one will just come along. And this is the thing about personal development. We think that we really need to fix ourselves. And the resilience is to go, there's nothing here to fix. Something happened that was bad in the world and I'm having a very normal reaction. So I'm having a normal reaction to an absolutely screwed up world because let's face it, this world is kind of mental. So I don't think you're mental. The world is mental. It's a bit mental, isn't it? So when things are set up that are inhumane, they don't work with humanity. Let's face it, rules barely work on children. How are they supposed to work on adults? You know, so when these things kind of come up like that, you can just go, oh yeah, I accept myself, I'm having a normal reaction. I'm angry, really angry. Or I'm really sad, I'm really upset. I'm feeling really down about that. Accept it. That's emotional resilience, is to go, yeah. <sighs> God, I do actually feel like that. And moving on. The next thing is that with emotional resilience, what happens when something bad happens is 
there's the thoughts and then there's the emotions that go with it and it's like a biochemical reaction that is triggered in your brain that can trigger dopamine and adrenaline and all of that stuff and when it all kicks in you feel like you're going to be sick your hands start shaking your body's almost convulsing and there's a reason for that because the more you shake the more you get that biochemical stuff out of your system i mean you look at a dog having a fight they'll have a good shake afterwards or birds flat wings you know, so if there's altercation and difficulty or stress, and this could even be down to that negative snippy little email, it doesn't have to be anything big. So what your reaction to it then is, huh, okay, this biochemical load of churning is going on and I feel like I'm going to be sick and my hands are shaking. All you want to do is make it stop. That's the most important thing. You just think, oh, just please make it stop. But actually, I promise you this, if you don't attach the thoughts, those connected rotational thoughts to that biochemical reaction, I promise you it lasts about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes at most. And after every storm is a wonderful sense of calm. If you cannot attach the thoughts to it, your emotions dissipate. You go from being in the reactive part of the brain to the logical part of the brain, and whatever you do, don't send that snippy email back. But you go from the reactive part of the brain to the logical part of the brain. You take a breath and you go, this is okay because I'm having a normal reaction to a screwed up situation or a screwed up world and I can cope with this because I'm all right and I'm brilliant. And as long as I don't, add things to add things to add things and make things mean stuff and make things mean stuff, it's actually quite calm. And I know that sometimes you can't help it when bad things happen and bad things happen and bad things happen and bad things happen and bad things happen, but it's how you break them down into the small stuff and don't attach to them. You can have 10 really difficult things to deal with, but be dealing with them so much better than someone who doesn't have emotional resilience. So they're the two keys to emotional resilience, but I'm gonna give you a third. Listen to your intuition. Because your intuition, your heart-led intuition, you can put your hand on your heart, your gut-led intuition goes fight or flight, like let's, well there's five F's and one of them's quite rude, but fight or flight. And actually, if you don't go into the fight or flight gut-led reaction to this always happens to me, I need to fix it and sort this out, and you actually allow things to just be, your heart-led intuition tells you the next right move. And then next might move would be like, do you know what? These people, not worth it, goodbye, going home now. Thanks so much for playing. It might be, yeah, I don't need to reply to this snippy email. I can, oh, I do need to, and this is what I need to say. I need to come back at it with a heart-led answer. But your intuition is the real key to what your next right move is after this. So there's the emotional resilience and then your intuition is the next key. And that intuition is what I call emotional intelligence. It's the emotional intelligence that comes after your emotional resilience. Now, I go into universities and I teach this to students and I have seen the profound impact it has. I have seen the light bulb moments and they've come up to me after the class and talked to me about where they had wished that they had already used this in their life because it's usually second or third year students that I'm talking to. But what about if I was to bring this into your business? How much easier would it be with your power dynamics that go on in your company where they have that one-upmanship stuff that happens? Yeah. So you can hire me to come into your business, but also I work one-to-one -one with clients. So you can also come and have a chat to me and go, right, yeah, that's great. Thanks for your two tips, but what else is it that I can do? Because I do have so much more to teach you. You grab a copy of my book, You Do Know Learning to Act on Intuition Instantly, if you like all of that stuff on emotional intelligence, because it's really, really quite sexy, just saying. Uh, but yeah, I hope to get to catch up with you soon and stay resilient, especially at this time of year, and especially with the craziness that's going on in the world. You've got this. You are fine. You can do this. All right. Catch you soon.